Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So we have some new intel today that dropped out of several, you know, blue leaning jurisdictions in the 2024 election. And it's good news for Donald Trump. It really is on both counts. And we could debate how good the news is, how likely is it going to come into fruition. We could have that discussion, but there is some intel out of one of the states as well that does show Trump is in a good position, even for other states, even if he's not able to really, you know, peel off said state. And we're, of course, talking about Virginia because we've seen so many polls in Virginia this election cycle. They're all over the place. You have polls that have Kamala Harris winning it by like eight. And you also have polls where it's within the margin of error. Governor Glenn Youngkin believes that Donald Trump can win the state of Virginia and while it's not a priority for Trump, I don't think it should be a priority for Trump. It is a good sign for Trump that the polls that are accurate in Virginia uh, historically, or even polls that have leaned left historically in Virginia, are showing Virginia to be in play. You have University of Mary Washington. They dropped a Biden by 17 poll in September of 2020. Now, September of 2024, they dropped a Harris by one. Now, do I believe that Virginia is going to flip? Probably not. Some people call me a doomer about Virginia, um, but to be honest, I'd like for it to flip. I just believe that we're better focused on winning North Carolina, Georgia, Pennsylvania before we start to expand into blue states uh, where things stand because we don't want to leave anything off the table uh, in a state like Pennsylvania, if we're going to spend those resources chasing a state like Virginia or, or New Jersey, New York, I think is a little bit different because I, I'm glad that Trump went up to New York because of the fact that you do have those down ballot races in New York. Same thing would go for, you know, if he goes to Springfield, Ohio for a rally, he gets to highlight the issue with the immigration. And also that might help somebody like Bernie Moreno cross the finish line in the state of Ohio uh, when you look at that. So, when it comes to Virginia, it's good that Donald Trump is being somewhat competitive, but it's not a state that I would tell Trump to like prioritize because, you know, he lost it by 10. You're going to have to make up 10 points worth of ground. And I think he's going to improve. He might even make up five points worth of ground, but is he really going to make up 10 points worth? I, I think he'd have to have a really, really, really good night to win Virginia. It is one of those states that does have a red mirage on election night. It's going to come in heavily Republican because all the rurals report first. And the Nova region, which is where a lot of the state's population is, it's where all the Democrats are up by D.C. They tend to report later on in the night. And, you know, it might confuse some people early on because I do expect Trump to be leading Virginia until probably like 70, uh, you know, 80 percent of the vote is counted in the state on election night. I will warn people about that beforehand, but do I expect him to end up winning it at the end of the day? Uh, probably not. But if he's doing well in Virginia, maybe it shows that he's doing a little bit better in North Carolina. The Kamala Harris campaign is really trying to push this narrative that, oh, they're in a great position in North Carolina. And part of it is because they know that she's struggling in Pennsylvania. They know she's struggling in Michigan and Wisconsin, and she's not doing well enough with you know, Hispanic voters or even suburban voters to win a state like Nevada or Arizona. So they're pushing this narrative about Georgia, North Carolina, oh, maybe she gets like Michigan or something, and that's her path to victory. And they're trying to use this whole like Mark Robinson smear campaign, whether it's real or it's not. Uh, you know, he's probably not favored right now. But again, reverse coattails is what they're trying to drum up this narrative of reverse coattails. They just don't exist. They've never existed before. They're trying to wish cast that into reality just so that they can, I don't know, delude themselves for another 46 days that they're in a good shape in North Carolina. I mean, it's a state they could win on a good night for them, but a lot would have to go wrong for Donald Trump as things stand right now to lose North Carolina. I'm not saying he can't lose it, but the fact that we see polls that have Virginia this close kind of prove that it's very difficult to see him go out there and, and you know, drop the ball in North Carolina. Because one of those sets of polls is, is probably going to be wrong, I guess I would say, uh, either way. But if Virginia is a state that the Harris campaign has to defend, I say let him try to defend it. Uh, I'm not saying that Trump needs to spend too much time there. 
but it kind of just shows that they're in a lot of trouble if Virginia's really all that close because it means that they are struggling in North Carolina. They may not be doing as well as they would have hoped in the Philadelphia area, uh, the Philadelphia suburbs. You know, obviously certain counties she's going to be doing better than others, but Virginia's a very establishmentarian state. And if Kamala Harris is struggling in a place like Virginia, that's not good news for Kamala Harris all around. It's just really not, especially because this poll had Biden winning by 17. And I encourage people that live in Minnesota, that live in Virginia, to get out and vote as soon as they can, because early voting, in-person early voting, is happening in those states. We need to bank as many votes as possible. And then you could drive all your friends to the polling place between now and election day. You know, while election month exists, let's take advantage of it. If people are worried about their vote, you can track your vote, you can watch your vote, make sure your vote gets counted, but people need to vote and they need to get other people out to vote, their apolitical friends, whatever. That's how we come out of nowhere and make a state like Virginia competitive. It's true. And we look at the early voting turnout we saw today. The counties that are some of the most Republican counties in the state, we're looking at this, they're likely to have the highest early voting as a percentage of their population in the whole state of Virginia. This is huge. You look at this, they're all 200% or more than the equivalent day in 2020. It shows that Trump voters were fired up. We're fired up across the country. In-person early voting, you look at this, Donald Trump is running up the score in Virginia. He's running it up right now. And we still got to find as many voters as we can down the stretch, but the fact that there's certain people that already vote, get it out of the way. The party can spend less resources trying to find those people and then try to find the people that haven't voted instead and get them out to vote on election day or closer to election day. It's it's smart and it is true that there are a lot of people voting across the state. Fairfax County, they're they're doing well. The Democrats are doing well, but still what we're seeing is the heavy Trump districts. You didn't see this last time. You didn't see this at all. And the fact we're having a higher turnout election, that's great news for Donald Trump. It did not used to be that way. You used to have high turnout elections benefit the Democrats. But now, because those like elitist, you know, always voting super voters, whatever you want to call them, they're the highest turnout constituency. And now they lean more left. That's really good news for Republicans if you have a higher turnout election. It's also why the midterms in many places in this country were very underwhelming for Republicans outside of a few like safe red states or safe blue states. Uh, you know, you look at Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, there were plenty of reasons why Republicans struggled for sure. But one of them was the fact that midterm electorates benefit the high propensity voter base. And they used to be more Republican back in the day. Now they're not. And while Republicans have a problem on their hands in these off-year elections, midterm elections, special elections, in presidential years, Democrats could very well be blindsided in a lot of these places just based on the fact that they think high turnout's going to help them. It's delusional. They can try. I hope they register voters as much as possible. I hope they try to get these, you know, ballots in the hands of disaffected Americans the way they tried in like Texas and Florida in 2020 because they thought they would flip the states and it backfired immensely on them and they ended up losing the states by more than what the poll showed. But we also have good news out of another jurisdiction, Nebraska second, because we talked about this earlier in the year about how Republicans are spineless and they kind of failed to make Nebraska winner take all, but the deadline passed to make Maine winner take all. So now Nebraska, there's more of a chance now that they're uh, going to have this effort that's going to change the electoral vote process. It would make Nebraska a state that would give all their electoral votes to the winner, which is how every state should be. Honestly, if Maine changes it after this election, I'd say that that's fine too. It just simplifies the electoral map you look at Nebraska, if Nebraska would be a solid red state, that would be good news for Donald Trump because let's say he did struggle in the Rust Belt for some reason. I don't think he's going to against Kamala Harris. But you look at North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada. These are four states where Donald Trump is either leading the polls or he's neck and neck in the polls in the case of Nevada. Boom, 269. That's going to win you the election in the House because Republicans are going to have a majority of state delegations. Uh, so do keep that in mind. The paths to 270, they increase substantially, especially if Democrats really have to go out there and defend a state like Virginia, maybe a state. I, w I don't really think Minnesota is going to be much in play, 
but you see them campaigning in states like New Hampshire, their internal numbers are not showing what the election mafia polling is showing, and it shows. So will Republicans actually do this in Nebraska's second? Eh, probably not. They're relatively spineless, let's be real. And they're like, oh, well, it's principle, but the left doesn't care about principle. We only have to care about it for some reason. We're playing by their rules and we're losing. I wonder why. But you look at who they're sending down there to lobby the lawmakers. It's Lindsey Graham. You think Lindsey Graham's going to really change people's minds? Probably not. Now, it is true the governor, I think, has signed on to it. There's a lot of people who want it to happen. But the last time they put it up to a vote, um, there was less pressure for sure. It was far before the election and it, it failed miserably despite Republicans having like a near super majority of support in the Nebraska State House, even though it's technically like nonpartisan or whatever. They're clearly, you know, people that have one side over another in that state chamber. But you look at this, that would be huge. One electoral vote would definitely change the entire landscape of the election. It would. That one electoral vote could be absolutely huge depending on how election night shakes out. Now, I do think that Donald Trump is probably best suited. You know, we talk about Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia. That would be a pathway to, to 270 that would make the most sense overall, logistically speaking. Uh, he'd hit 271. He'd hit 270 if you don't get Nebraska second. But even then, that one electoral vote could be insurance for like a faithless elector or, or something like that. So we'll have to see what happens overall. But we have good news today. The early voting in Virginia looks good. Maybe there's a shot that we're going to be able to get Nebraska second uh, to, I guess you would say, become Republican because the entirety of Nebraska would just move towards a winner-take-all system. Maine, it's too late to change the deadline in Maine, so they wouldn't be able to do that. But Nebraska still could. So they're like seething about it. They're like, they are going to steal an electoral vote. It's like, okay, why don't we talk about the election law changes in the 2020 election? But they don't want to talk about that for obvious reasons. So spare me the outrage. I hope they do it. Got to win this election at all costs. That's how the Democrats view it. That's how we have to view it. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below. Comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.